This programme features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Hola, hola, y jambo, jambo, todo del mundo. ¿Qué tal vais? Bienvenidos en este safari de este más semana, que es el último safari uh, desde acá. Estoy un poco triste, pero es como va la vida. ¿Qué tal vais? Me llamo David. Eh, conmigo hoy es Achi. Well, that is all the Swahili I had to speak today, and uh, I'm sure I'm going to try and say the same thing uh, in English, that uh, a very good afternoon, everybody, or a very a good morning, or I don't know what time it is, wherever you are, but a warm welcome to this very special driver of today, and especially from here in the Masimara, because it's going to be the very last drive before we go off here. A bit sad. But I'm trying to get my strength. I'm trying to be a strong gentleman. And I want to show you all what I've been enjoying uh, for the last, I would say, over a year. When we look at that, honestly, that's a very beautiful world. I mean, that view of the Mara Triangle, it is a breathtaking. And I'm sure all of you will agree with me. And not sure where in the background there actually is a rainbow, maybe. I think there's a rainbow, could be too far, but in the background there, see whether we can uh, capture it. And I know Archie uh, is a magic guy when it comes to the camera. This beautiful rainbow there. I'm not sure the rainbow is trying to say goodbye to me or goodbye to us. Fantastic, Archie. Well, I just want to unpack the plants I have for all of you today, ladies and gentlemen. And as I said uh, yesterday and the day before, We'll be coming to the end of our broadcast uh, from the Mara. We'll be going off air after the show for today. But I have two pieces of good news. And number one, we'll be back as soon as possible. And number two, Juma, there, Sami Sons, in the western fringes of Kruger National Park, will still be running as usual. Morning drive, and in the afternoon, they'll always be having two shows. Let's have a look at that beautiful site one more time, because I need to show you something that I have and give you all the plans I have for you this afternoon. I have a lot of uh, good news for all of you. And I have two plans. Number one, I'll be doing some song that I did in the morning. Not sure how many of you were able to be with me today, this morning. And I did some two songs. And I'm going to repeat the same songs today for those maybe who could have been sleeping or who could have been somewhere working, that's number one. Two, there's a very special ceremony I am going to do. And my ceremony will be trying to say goodbye to all uh, the animals, all the iconic animals of this special place. And Faith in the Final Control, who is directing the show, he's saying yes. And what else will I be doing? Singing, and of course the ceremony. And then I'll be showing you all the iconic animals as much as I can or the iconic trees of uh, this very beautiful place of the Mara Triangle. As I said earlier, uh, or yesterday, we have, we are getting, thank you very much. I think everybody likes uh, my, my boots and I have to be very careful that Archie doesn't take one. Uh, this morning I was missing one pair or one part and then the other one, I found it in Archie's tent. This one's uh, for the uh, zebra running. Now. We really have to thank you, fans. We really have to thank you, viewers. You have done us a lot of good. We are so proud of you. Of course, we're going to miss you, not for a very long time, but as we continue discussions uh, with the Narco County government, we have to thank the Narco County government, the Mara Conservancy, and all our partners, you know, Mara and Gama Lodge, and all the wonderful people. Now, I got a hat here, and in this hat, I'm trying to bend so that Archie can see what I got. I got some gifts there. Can you see that, Archie? Very good. So we got some flowers there, and they're all of different colors. And these flowers have different meanings. I am going to unpack that much later on. So don't go away, because all these flowers will have particular meaning. Some will be for you, and the other flowers will be for the iconic cuts of this particular area. So I need to thank you very much. And I'm going to move forward and 
try and find out what I see as I try to improve or try to uh, soothe, soothe my, 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 my throat so that when I start singing, I'm going to give you uh, some wonderful voices. In the meantime, we'll take you back to Juma. Uh, we'll take you back to Juma, and Oli would be happy to say hello to all of you. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to South Africa. So it's perfect weather for today here in Juma. My name is Tolly, and joining us behind the camera is BK. So we are coming to you live from the western flanks of the Kruger National Park, Sabi Sands. It's hot, it's about 28 degrees Celsius, that's 83 degrees Fahrenheit. So, what a nice song from Gigi this morning. Uh, we'll take that song to iTunes. So my plan for today is to drive around. You know why? Because I'm the only one who's driving this afternoon. James will be walking, and it simply means I'll be going west, east, north, and south. So for any questions and comments, please send them on hashtag Safari Live on Twitter or YouTube chat stream. You know, keep me busy. So I'm from where? Was Tandi? Where they last saw Tandi? And then they said there's a there's a kill on top there, on top of a tree, but there was nothing. I think Tandi came back and 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 and, and, and finished everything. And so I'm on my way to the where eastern side and then uh, central again i'll be looking for the inkuhumas the inkuhumas that uh, jamie left this morning and the kuhumas are pride of it's a pride of line consists of 11 members and then they uh, are ruled by three males which are called the focus so I don't know whether they've moved because earlier on we had a very cloudy weather. Then um, I think they've moved, but if we are lucky, we'll see them. Who knows? Okay, everyone says good luck and they have faith in me. Oh, yes, I'll try my level best to find everything. Who knows, I'll find Tingane. Talamba or Tandi again because uh, south, east, and north that's where Talamba and Tingana they like to hang around. So, who knows? Oh, it's just so a bird, it flew off, and that was a Shikra, smallest bird, beautiful bird. Linda, she's saying it sounds like it's too hot for her. Uh, it's not really hot, hey, for me, because uh, this place gets hot, more especially during summer. It gets up to 43 degrees Celsius, and that's hot. And I think that's uh, around uh, 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, it gets hot this place. So, but water bottle is here all the time. You have to keep hydrated in this place. I'll be checking and checking whether maybe I'll find something here. I'll check for all the tracks and I'll stop for alarm calls. Ooh! Some viewers are, are reminding me of something. Voting day. Yes, today is the 8th of May, right? Yes, we're voting. I voted this, uh, this morning. I voted for... It's my secret. <laughs> Let me stop and show you something. I don't know whether in your countries or places they do this. Uh, BK. Let's show, let's show this to the viewers. Yes, this is... Uh, a marking that is done by those people who are in the voting station there just to yes 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 i voted so they do this because they don't want us to go there twice or a second time to vote okay and i don't know where one is going to 
this thing. Maybe tomorrow. Or a day after tomorrow. Who knows? Yes. You know all the time voting and the vote is a secret. I won't tell you which which party I voted for, but I did. Just imagine if animals were were also voting it was supposed to be it was going to be something else, eh? Just imagine giraffes carrying ray. So <sighs> Ben, where is the voting station here in the bush? You know what happened? There are no stations here in the bush. We went out, out of the reserve. There, there's a neighboring community there, a place called Dixie. Some of you might know Dixie. And there's a voting station there. Uh, let's see, there's something there. If, uh, before, uh, let's try and get it. There's a terrapin there. Uh, but it went inside there. So it was me, James, Marcel Tekai, to name the few, went there. Oh, if you can listen to, to the surrounding, you can hear the birds and the impala rotting there. And these impalas, they really attract our attention because you will think that maybe it's an alarm call. Yes, those birds that you can hear now. So see, that's a magpie shrike. It's also known as long tail shrike. Oh, it's getting windy. Oh, look at those terrapins there. PK, let's go there. And you see those tortoise-like creatures there. Yeah. Just go straight there, straight. Zoom straight, go right, a little bit right, on your right, on the other side. On the other side, there. Those tortoise-like things, they, they are well camouflaged because they look like rocks there. Okay. Outside. Yeah, outside, just there, in the middle of your screen. Just, yeah, go down. Yes! Well spotted, PK. So those are terrapins, you can see there. They are sunbathing because they they are trying to keep them themselves warmer because they've been swimming all day. It's nice and peaceful out here, and this weather is perfect for us to go and, uh, and see a leopard or any cat. So. I'll be bumbling, maybe I'll see all sorts of beautiful things. But for now, let's go to the president of the Sausage Tree Pride. Oh yes, only it's very true, this president of the Sausage Republic. And I changed uh, that particular area and I started calling it the sausage state because they actually own that area and it is their home permanently. Well, it's always very special to see uh, some uh, reptiles, you know, talking about ter terrapins in the water. And also here in the Mara, we've got lots of terrapin and especially one particular type uh, that we call the marsh terrapin. Well, on part of my housekeeping, because of the sadness I have today, I forgot to give you an idea of how the weather looks like here in the Mara Triangle, but we are doing 82 degrees Fahrenheit and 28 uh, degrees Celsius. I think I spoke a lot of uh, uh, Swahili, a lot of Spanish, and I forgot to say that, and not forgetting to also request you, and I'm sure Oli must have told you questions, comments, more than welcome as usual, hashtag Safari Live. Well, possibly today, if I'm lucky, 
I would want to catch up with my favorite pair of lions, uh, the sausages, for only one reason, to say goodbye. It doesn't sound easy. Uh, it's easier said than done. But, uh, you know, if I would be able to see them, I would be able to wave at them. Yesterday, I had a wonderful time uh, with the Owinos, and we had a wonderful show on their buffalo kill that I saw four days ago. If I'm lucky to see the sausages, why not? It'll be a good time uh, to say goodbye. That's my whole plan for today. But ideally, drive around, look for any one particular scenery, had some nice... James Richard, how are you? And I can tell you, I'll miss you, my brother, and I'm sure you'll also miss me. And possibly, cross your fingers, James Richard, we could have a chance either to see Busara or to see Kakenya, Elope, Mugi, it could be anybody. So I am out, as I said, perfect weather we got, and I'll just keep looking. You never know, we could have one more chance. Uh, possibly, if I must, I'd be happy to see Kakenya. Now, aren't you telling me why you want me on this particular buffalo? So you have it there, okay. Now, this is gonna be my first uh, animus on my very last drive from the Mara Triangle. And it's just a huge herd of buffaloes. And with such high temperatures, you know, over 80 Fahrenheit, over, you know, 20 degrees Celsius, it's hot. And what would happen, uh, these big beefs or buffs should just take it easy and just keep chewing cud, as you can see there. And so many birds flying on top of them, not sure whether they're ox pickers or some kind of uh, swallows, but I would imagine the ox pickers will never miss an opportunity uh, to get any uh, parasite from the bodies of these buffaloes. Two types of ox pickers uh, we got here in the Mara, the red-billed ox pickers and the yellow-billed ox pickers. I see more uh, yellow bill ox pickers than the red bill where we are. Very nice, it's just a huge hut. I'm trying to do a quick count and something close to 100 plus. That's the average I'm getting is 100 plus uh, buffaloes there. And not very far from the Ololo gate. Ololo is one of the main gates that enters the Mara Triangle. Of course, once it cools off, they'll definitely be up and about and start feeding. So this could be a whole mixed herd, males, females, and young ones. Ellie girl, how are you? And you'd like to see some crown crates. Ellie girl, that doesn't sound like a very big demand. There's a very big possibility, Ellie girl, for me uh, to catch some crown crates for you. It is possible, it's doable. Don't go anywhere, Ellie girl. And you've got about two hours or 50, on 50 minutes or so, two hours, 45 minutes uh, for me to do that. Good request. James Richard, Achita, I got work to do. And it's always nice when you hear our fans or our viewers requesting for what we can be able to do for them. Why not? If it's possible, it'll be possible. I'll say Hakuna Matata. So most of the birds are riding on those uh, buffaloes. They are ox pickers, quite a distance. I don't know whether they're the yellow bill or the red bill, but ideally they are ox pickers doing what they do best and getting any ticks or mites on top of uh, those uh, buffaloes. African Cape buffaloes. And again, as I say, because it's pretty hot, uh, they just want to cool off. I just want to pull four a little bit and show you two of them that are on the left. And you'll see, because of the heat, they have been having a little, like, not really a jacuzzi, but they've been mad wallowing and just to help themselves to cool off. And I'm sure quite a number of them have been doing that. I've got a small little opening here of the road. And you see how they look different, how they look shiny on their coat. Uh, because of all the mud and the wetness uh, that they got on their bodies. This little stream uh, to our left here, and like most big animals in the heat of the day, that's what they will do. Are you happy there, Archie? Oh, oh yeah, this is all very good, Archie. Good sporting. Show you where they have been mud wallowing, and it's like a little muddy swimming pool for them. Look at that. one of them right inside there 
Look at how he's buried in the mud. Aren't they clever to keep cool? This is just so cool. It's something I haven't seen. I don't remember having seen this in a long time. Maybe a good way to like tell uh, all of us uh, goodbye for now before we come back. And looking at him carefully from the size of the horns, they seem, oh, they seem pretty big. He seems like to be a male. In general, you get the males like dominating and having the rights to mud wallow and not the females. But also once in a while, you'll see females doing the same. Not exclusively males, but in general, the males tend to be a little selfish in mud wallows and you see them staying in. I think that's what Archie wanted to show us in front of us. You'll see one. Synergy, you say it looks like a dreamscape. It is. And as I was saying earlier, when I started uh, the drive, this place is so special. Any way you think of the Mara Triangle, it is special. If you look at things, they don't look, you know, uh, real. They look like co they are like computer generated. But Synergy, thank you for that. It's so scenic. The landscape, the greenness, the wetness of the streams, of the wells, of the springs, the huge trees. And of course, it's made even more colorful by the bats, like what you can hear chipping there, and such beautiful game of animals. And you notice the color of the grass has different shades of green, and the greener and the shorter area is where we have uh, some stream running. Huge herd of buffalo, and I would say they may stay here until maybe another one or two hours until it cools off for them to start uh, making any movement. Well, buffaloes, I have to say muchas gracias por todo. Adios. And we'll be seeing you pretty soon. All right. I'll have to move on now and find out what I have ahead. I'm trying to see if, uh, if possible where they can catch the big five. And the one buffalo that was in the water, do you think it has come out from the mud wallow? Just moving now, definitely coming to join the rest of the herd. This is just wonderful. Look at how majestic he is. He is a big one, almost the same size, like what I saw the other day uh, being brought down by the Oinos. Oinos, a pair of lions and we saw them the other day. How lovely is that goes through that drainage. They're gonna come out. See how he's going to behave once he joins the rest. Okay, Gigi, you can link for Very good. We'll be letting these buffaloes rest here and I'm going to move on, find out what else I will get. And in the meantime, I'll take you back to Juma, to Koli. Yes, I found the Nkuhumas on the same spot where they were, they left them this morning. You know, they are doing what they do best, sleeping and relaxing. And this pride consists of 11 members, but I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The others are in the thickets there. So we'll be getting a nice spot there, trying by all means to get a nice spot. Nice camera work. PK, you can only see it's back there. And I can see the males. I don't think the males are here. Just imagine how well they camouflage in this thicket. Remember these lions, they can sleep up to 20 hours a day. And that's a long sleep. Yes, I wish they were, they were moving. I thought they would be moving because uh, of, the, of the weather this morning. So it seems like they are a little bit full. 
So that's why they need to relax. I don't see any reason to to walk distances. So they'll be here, or maybe they'll be up and about when the sun goes down. And you can see they're heavily panting because it's hot and they slightly full. And if you can check, even if they are fast asleep, but they can sometimes see the ear twitching there, just because it's it's just uh, chasing away the flies. And sometimes maybe they are listening. You might think that they are they are only sleeping. They can also listen to the surrounding. How many lions are here? Every, I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We spotted seven, but I think there are more than that because uh, they are they are scattered all over the place here. Yeah. So I will try to reposition and, and get uh, to see all of them. And remember, I don't want to drive on top of a lion because. Because these uh, lions they can well camouflage. James is calling me on the radio. Let me respond to him. Standing by, James. I'm on Central Road now, just right after the dry river bed with the lions. Copy that, thank you. Yes, that was James. You wanted to know my route. And it's so quiet and peaceful here. So I can't really tell who's who because uh, some of the viewers and most of the viewers, they know these lines by names but i can only spot one but not now when they are up and about because there's this one called purple eye he she is easily identified because of the uh, blind left eye so the others difficult we have to spend a long time with these lines debbie can i see either of the young males nope because the the positioning here, we've tried our level best to get a nice view of these lines, but huh, it's so difficult. But when they lift their heads up, I will try to identify whether the young males are here or not. And remember, lions, they don't, even if they live in a pride, they, they don't stay together all the time. You might find out maybe two, they're just far away f from the rest of the pride. And I've noticed that uh, some lions, like maybe two or three, they form this close friendship and they'll normally leave the pride and go forage somewhere around the territory and then they will come back maybe in a day or two. You can see the teats there. It simply means it's not pregnant. Yes. Because normally when they are pregnant, BK, can you please go to the left there? Because there's a, that line, it's up. You can see it's up. I think that is a lion we saw yesterday because I think there's mud on its face. Yes. What do you think, BK? It is him. Yeah, it's him. I think this is the young male, Mangeni male. Yes, this is the one what we were with yesterday. can't really see the other one because well camouflaged oh the viewers are saying that was the female that I was with last night and even the FC confirmed that that was the female it looked confusing to me yesterday and thank you thank you for for identifying this line 
or this is the female. And it simply means the males are somewhere around here or maybe far away from this pride. A nice scratch there. And remember their their tongue, oh what they yawn there. Their tongue, they are like um, the sandpaper. They are rough, so they can scratch nice and easy just by using their tongue. Oh, it sounds like James is calling my name, so I'll be here. Hopefully these lines will be up and about and I'll reposition myself. But for now, let's go to James on the bushwalk. Good afternoon, everybody. I've got some distressing news, and that is, is that Tundi has finished her kill and gone away. So that is a bit sad. My name is James Henry on camera today. Rondre. Wonderful. And we will be going not anymore to look for Tundi. Apparently, Taxon said they did find Tlalamba again earlier today and she had killed a small kudu. So we'll go and see if we can find the small kudu and Tandi's daughter attached to that. Otherwise, I'm sure we'll find some interesting other things on this early winter's afternoon. It does seem quite astonishing that summer is over and we're into the early part of winter, but that is just the way things go. Of course, time moves at the same speed, but it just seems to go a little bit faster the closer to the end of your life you get. Isn't that a cheerful thought? As you can see, I voted today. Chandra, you also voted. We exercised our democratic rights and civic duties and all those good things. And we'll probably spend the next five years complaining about the people either we voted for or didn't vote for. You know how it goes, the same everywhere, really. All right, let's go off towards the far east now, to the Singapore noodle stands of Gwari Pan Road. Sorry, Sam, I missed that. Faith, may we have it again? My radio was a bit soft in my ear. Ah, the, ele the elections of the animals at Juma, who would win, Sam? That's a very good question. I think that the elections would be won by the most politically astute, which immediately takes us to the primates, so we'll exclude ourselves. Uh, we'll go to the baboons and the monkeys as the most socially complex primates, and then, of course, the hyenas, which are also socially complicated and in fact have all the right parts of the brain to indicate that they have pretty much the same kinds of intelligence that the baboons have and then I suppose we might go to the elephants those would be the four parties the elephants the well maybe the mongoose as well the dwarf mongoose five parties the dwarf mongoose the elephants the hyenas the monkeys and the baboons what I think would probably happen in this case is that the elephants being of generally good nature, not nearly as political as the others, their ascension of their leader takes place by sort of mm, uh, default, really. You know, the leader of an elephant herd is the oldest female normally. Uh, she doesn't have to dominate the others which that means that although they have a socially complicated arrangement, it's not actually very political. So I don't think they would win, unfortunately. If we go to the mongoose, well, yes, they have quite a lot of complicated uh, political machinations going on. I feel like they're just a bit too small, though, to make a serious dent on the political landscape. So that leaves us with three, monkeys, baboons and hyenas. Now, if I was to put a, uh, my money on the 
real kind of uh, cutthroat politicians of the bush, well, I'd have to choose between the baboons and the hyenas, and I think you'd probably come out pretty equal either side. But what I think would tip it in the baboon's favor is the fact that although they are not the same, they are probably politically aligned in some small way to the monkeys. And so I think that an alliance between the monkeys and baboons would win out in any election that took place out here. And this area would be ruled by the monkey-baboon coalition with the hyenas in main opposition, the mongoose occupying a couple of back benches, and the elephants giving up and not giving a damn after a couple of days and just going about their business. So that's how I think it would play out here. Impalas would be absolutely hopeless, they're slightly too dim-witted. Bush babies also rather just not particularly interested despite their prim primate status. And so yes, I think, uh, you know, that's lions. Lions are more kind of a criminal organization than a pr political party. And so while the lions might lobby you know, the lions might have quite a strong lobby. Uh, one wonders who they'd lobby for. Would they lobby for the hyenas or the baboon monkey coalition? Yes, Lorena, you, you make a good point. An elephant in must might win, but we must not confuse uh, outright aggression and uh, the desire for status, and dare I say it, sex, uh, for political astuteness. Uh, I don't think a, an elephant bull is particularly politically astute. I think that, that uh, and elephants are just not very political animals. They get through their conflicts with a bit of violence uh, when there is conflict, and then otherwise they're very peaceful creatures in general. Whereas the baboons, they're ready for a scrap, as are the hyenas. They're thinkers. Lions, not thinkers at all. Lions, just a bit gormless. And so I really think that I've got it straight here. The baboons and monkey coalition would win out against the hyenas. And if the baboons could get an outright majority, well, then there would be trouble. Because then the monkeys would really be in a very small minority with, uh, the, with the mongoose. Let's go back to the gangsters now, lazy, not particularly uh, sharp of mind, uh, with Poli. Yes, I'm with the gangsters, you know, but I don't think they'll win the elections if we had any more elections. The elephants will be winning the elections because they have this massive body they're big, and they will be threatening every animal that is around. So I've repositioned, but I'm still not getting a nice view because you can see how they uh, are sleeping, showing us their back and their, their bumps and their shoulders. See that one, it's uh, cuddling on that branch there, saving a nice nap. And sometimes they will, they will shake a little bit or sometimes they will just uh, Nick wants to know how long will the, the male cops are pushed out of this pride. Mm, it will take about three years when it comes to males and then uh, the females you know they stay with the pride until then the the males will only live a nomadic lifestyle for us for up to two to two and a half years and then they'll they'll go and and contend for a territory so this one is coming this side at least it's giving it us its face so if you know who's this send that on hashtag safari live on twitter or youtube chat stream because I'm, I'm i'm with my profile here but i can't really really tell because these eyes to me they look the same because there's a rich nose there's purple eye there's the, all these females easy because that one has it's uh 
scar or wound on her left uh, thigh. Oh, this animal is so massive. And look at that one, the way it's sleeping. And then they will be starting to move. And what they do is they don't stand up at the same time. One will stand up and walk a short distance and and lie down. Then the, uh, the other one will, will, will do the same. And they will, they will all move after that. Oh, I'm sure it was uh, looking for a nice ground there. And for sure, it has one. <laughs> PK, please uh, go to those hind legs of, of that line and see how this line is sleeping. <laughs> Ms. Anna. Uh, really, it is not easy, as you, is, you find it difficult also to, to identify these lines. Look what is happening. Go to your right, BK. Sorry for that, because there's a line that's on the move now, on your right. This is what they do before they move properly, because what, or what they peek you on there. And definitely, this is a female. Oh, it has a scar on its, yes, on its on its left face there. And the one with the scar, something like that, it's the uh, oldest female. Ah, it's not. It is? No, it's not. Oh, these lines have like s scars. There's m a lot of scars on their faces and their body. So sometimes it's not so reliable to, to rely on those uh, wounds or markings because lions they live this toughest lifestyle because they have to fight when feeding deborah loves the way they hug each other when they sleep yes this is what they do lions they normally do this and sometimes they'll just uh throw themselves on on each other that's what they do. And look at that other one. Go to your right, uh, BK. On your right, it's stretching that line there. Line stretching. This is what they do. I told you, they'll be moving soon. Look at the other one. It's moving now. It's on the move. Shall you let me look straight into your eyes? Maybe you'll tell me your name. Yes, indeed. Our viewers are the best. This is a female, it's not a male. Mm. And look how huge that paw is. That, oh, it, it's hidden that foot there. So, I think I really need to to get a nice view here because they are just not far away from the from the vehicle that will make BK to work a, a little bit. So for us to do that, we need some time. So let's go to Chichi who's driving in the Mara. Very good, Oli. And uh, yeah, you better reposition yourself because I think at the moment, you are the man who is uh, stealing the show from all of us because at least you got some lions, you got the Nukuhumas, very well done. Now, I'm just trying to walk back. Uh, the one year I have been, you know, uh, presenting and uh, bringing you this uh, wonderful wilderness of the Mara Triangle. And if I look back the over one year period I've been here, most of that time I have been a lot of ups and ups and ups. I do not remember very many times I would say were down or I would say they were a bit sad. And if I remember all the successes, it's always a lot easier to remember the failures and not the failures per se, to remember the sad moments 
you know, while you have been out here because as guides, the times you're out going out there, you're seeing like the buffaloes you saw the other day, the winners hunting, you feel sorry for the buffalo because they took like over two hours plus uh, to bring it down. Well, I might have first to pause on that story for a moment and I'm assuming that Ellie girl, are you still there? Faith, can you see Ellie girl? Because Ellie girl had requested me for some crown cranes and I'm just hoping Ellie girl, you are still there. I got two on the road. I want to first stop. <laughs> and Ellie girl, Faith, the final control, she's telling me she's using her far lookers or binoculars to find out if she can see you. And I hope she has seen you, Ellie girl. And if she has, then I'm happy that you're still there. And there is your request, Ellie girl. I love uh, so many birds, but I would say that the crown cranes, Ellie girl, are very iconic birds. Very good, Ellie girl, to hear you're still there. Very many thanks. And I was saying earlier that the Crown cranes, I would say they are some of the iconic buds of the Mara Triangle. I hope this will make your day, Eligal. Always very difficult to tell the male from the female. But of all the beautiful parts of this bird, the crane is just, see how it just shakes it, like a girl shaking her hair, eh? And you can see the amount of wind blowing her frontal breast furthest there. They seem to be quite relaxed and comfortable, and I'm sure uh, Faith also directing the show is enjoying them from the final control. So Elika, what I want to do is just to move forward a little bit. I have warmed up with them and give you some better close-ups. And Elika, if you can, I would want you to uh, whisper a small little goodbye to these uh, crown cranes here and tell them uh, you'll see them once I am back here. But I'm sure we also have the same birds uh, in Juma. Diane, very good comment, and you say they are just beautiful, and I'm sure, Diane, you're enjoying the beauty of these birds uh, together with Eligal and all the other viewers. See the very long legs they got. Now, it's not because they need the uh, long, uh, legs to walk in the water. They need them to give them some balance because look at the toes and see how she's lifting uh, the feet up. Do you see how wide they are? This is very good camera work, Archie. Very many thanks. It's not because they need them to walk in the water. It's just because they need uh, the feet helps them to give them a good balance because of their height. Long legs, long body, see the long neck. So they need some wide uh, feet just to have some uh, good balance. I guess they're catching all the insects they can in the grass there. Eligal and Diane, would you be able to tell me which is the male and which is the female? Deborah, you are very right that Africa has the most gorgeous birds. I mean, we got people, Deborah, who will only come to Africa to watch birds. And I could be here where I am watching this crane. And maybe some friend of mine whispers to me, oh, David, I got news for you. And I'm like, what news do you have? There's a leopard not very far from where you are. And it's feeding on some sort of antelope. And then I'll tell, you know, my guest, excuse me, not to interrupt you, but a friend of mine just passed some news. There's a leopard that is on a kill. And they'll tell me, uh, David, very many thanks. That leopard is yours. You can keep it. We want to watch the birds. So, Deborah, don't be surprised. We've got people, including myself, who love birds. To the west of Kenya, there's a country called Uganda, and this is the national bird of Uganda. Jennifer, that's a very nice question. You're asking about the head and the crane when it rains. I will tell you, Jennifer, it is stays upright, Jennifer. It doesn't do much because they're like stalks of grass that are very solid. And there's no way that if it's rained on, it would go fluffy or it could just fall. It remains very solid and very upright. There's a time I was watching them in the rain. Actually, they had some small little chicks. And I thought, you know, the crane 
of the small chicks go, you know, floppy, but they remained uh, very solid. And I hope, uh, Jennifer, you are ready today uh, for the singing and the dancing, and I hope you're all very prepared because we'll make a very good choreography. Uh, myself, Archie, uh, Jennifer, yourself, I mean, uh, Faith, and all the other viewers will need to do a bit of singing and dancing later in the day. I was saying earlier, it's very difficult to tell males from females. All right, yes, that will be very good. We did a little bit of it with Emma. Uh, who was directing the show in the morning, so yeah, I'm sure she all went warmed up and ready to do more of it. So slowly pass there, very difficult to tell the male from female, as I said earlier, but in general, the male is always slightly larger in size and heavier a little bit, uh, I would say, than the female. Well, thank you for that. Actually, we got some water box there. Do you want to have a look at water box and move on? Hello, Waterbox. How are you all doing? Now, all these are girls, and I'm sure you can tell why. Oh, there's a boy, yeah. Thank you, Archie. Correction there. There's one big boy. And Aida with so many... Yeah, you can hear some birds that are chipping from the water area there. That's a tropical boo-boo. Do you hear that? That is an African fish eagle. We're not very far from the Mara River, and I'll be trying to head in that direction. And Deborah, I mean, I, I really like your comment because you said you, you know, you don't think there's any place that have wonderful uh, birds like Africa. Archie, I'm not sure Archie's going to like me for this, but Archie, from a distance, where they are still, uh, Archie, you read my mind, Archie. Deborah, can you see that? Okay, uh, Faith, I'd want to ask this question specifically to Deborah, if she can tell me which bird is that, because I'm sure Deborah has been following us for a long time. Deborah, a question for you from David in Kenya. What bird is that? I'm giving you one minute. I'm not really... <laughs> so I'm sure you know how to do these hashtags to find live on Twitter. Anybody else out there who could have an idea of what bird is that? And I'll give you some one clue. is a type of a stalk. And I think of all the stalks, this is the most beautiful stalk. You'll get, you'll get the male having some little uh, yellow wattles hanging below the neck. The females have yellow eyes and the males have brown eyes. I think that's a good hint to let us know what to talk with this hashtag safari live on twitter always in water of course feeding for any invertebrates you know she would get and like the crown cranes we were watching earlier there are uh, early girls uh, request this one is very easy to tell males from females Deborah, now, you'll have to come to Africa for me to tell you the name. But because you're a good viewer of ours, I'll tell you the name. And that's the Sandu Build Stock. Sandu Build Stock. More birds and birds there. Well done, Archie. And we got an egret. That's the big bird there. It's an egret. And the smaller ones there are called the sacred ibis. Sacred ibis. So in this one area of Sat, I would say we've seen like four species of birds, which are the crown cranes the gray crown cranes, we have seen the sandobiel stock, we got the great egret there, and we got the sacred ibis. And this is the beauty of Africa. I mean, game all over, and more so the Mara Triangle. One of the most beautiful stocks, I'll tell you, that I know, very long beaks, and I'm sure either some frogs, she's catching herself, there's something in the mouth there, and I think there's a fish. Yeah, she got a fish there. And how clever for these birds. They're always very patient when they go uh, feeding and they're never in a rush, you know? They always stay there and they take the time just like the herons until uh, they see something they can catch. She moves around, spots something. The beak is so powerful, it's like a spear. And once she spots something, she just like throws the neck forward 
pushes the back right, the beak right through the mud and either kills or grabs what it wants. And most of what they catch, they just sometimes or more often than not swallow them alive. Excellent. Pretty, di pretty difficult to tell also from a distance, but again, unlike the crown cranes, this one's as I said, you can easily tell males from females looking, you know, at the eyes, on, on the eyes, and also looking on the yellow wattles that will hang on the males right below the base of the neck and the beak. So the trees you see there in the background, that's part of the Mara River, and on my way to look for any lions, I'll sing by the river because I'd want to show you how the water levels have risen, which is pretty good news. As I go home tomorrow, it will be Hakuna Matata, knowing that the animals will have enough to eat. <laughs> Very good. I think uh, James Henry is trying to compete with me because he got a cat that got some types of spots. Yes, we do have a cat with spots. More accurately, we have a lot of grass, a couple of gory leaves, and, well, evidence perhaps of some sort of spotted cat. It is Lalamba. She is enormously fat and full because she has murdered a kudu and put it under a bush not too far from here. Taxon managed to find her again because I certainly wouldn't have. So, I don't think we're going to go anywhere from here this afternoon. We're going to stay right here until hopefully she returns to her kill and begins to devour it once again. Very, very pleasant temperatures out here at the moment. 82 degrees odd, I'm told, Fahrenheit, 82 to 83. So, same as the Mara, which is not common. And uh, I guess... All of us are going to pay tribute to the Mara at some stage during the day. It is a very sad, sad day, but with any luck, we'll be back broadcasting out of the Mara very soon. Yes, many of you are very happy to be with Tlalamba again. Uh, all of you saying yay. It is particularly yay because she seems to have managed to kill something quite large. Now, uh, we keep saying, oh, she's killed something big for the first time or the second time. Uh, well, yes, it's true. She is killing larger things, and I think she's into sort of full-grown hunting. I don't think she's going to ever kill anything much bigger than she's killing now, which is great. But as you can see, this is not the best Lalamba sighting we've ever had. I haven't whipped out my camera to start taking illegal photographs. Synergy absolutely Tlalamba trees her kills at the moment. She trees the smaller kills. Remember that a male impala or this baby kudu will be very difficult for her to get into a tree. It's much too heavy. You might find someone like Tandi being able, well, Tandi in her prime being able to lift a fully grown male kudu, at least a male kudu, male impala into a tree. But a youngster like Tlalamba, who's still got probably a year of muscle growth to go, she's not going to be able to lift a big male impala into a tree, I don't think, just yet. Now, Tax is just explaining to the other guests or to Rexon how to get in here. They too have a beautiful sighting of two spots. And I tell you, if she wasn't panting, it'd be quite difficult to make out that there was a leopard in there, wouldn't it? I do think it's going to be worth staying here, though. In fact, I think Rexon has managed to luck out. I think he's got a pretty good view. Poor cats, I wonder what they think when they're sleeping peacefully and suddenly an army of people come and look at them. Tom, 
A very interesting question you've asked. And, I mean, this is the kind of question that you could talk about for days. I won't do that, don't worry. Do I think that she's a better hunter because of nature or nurture? Well, obviously, at its most obvious level, it's, it's both. She is a natural hunter. She's a cat. She has a genetic predisposition to hunting. It's a genetic predisposition to her behavior. We know that if she was raised in captivity without the influence of a mother leopard, she would still try and catch things and hunt them. We also know that leopards don't learn as much from their parents as, say, cheetahs do. Uh, I know that there's some debate about that. Um, I've, I'm pretty sure that it's accurate to say that they are not... Um, they're not learners like cheetah youngsters are. But she will learn tricks not only from her mother, she will learn from the nurture of the environment. So nurture, often people think, well, does somebody taught her to do something? It also applies to the lessons she herself learns from experience. So that has an enormous effect on her ability to hunt. So it's the combination of her experience and her genetics that make her the huntress that she is today. So to say is it nature or nurture, well, it's it's, it would be silly to say it's one or the other. Um, at the same time, it's possible that she has some sort of genetic predisposition to being a good huntress. Perhaps she's slightly faster, perhaps she's slightly stronger than other leopards of the same age, and perhaps that makes her slightly more able well, to catch big prey, maybe she's slightly quieter. She's got a better feeling for being quiet. It's a little bit like uh, cricket or well, any sport where you're genetically predisposed to being good at it. But without developing that talent, without nurturing that talent, you'll never become an international cricket player or a, a major league bas baseball player. Similar kind of a thing. All of it is nature and nurture. And if we can get to nature via nurture in so much as if there is some kind of um, nature via nurture, if, oh, what am I saying now? If there is some kind of um, predisposed change in the environment that makes one genetic behavior uh, more successful than another uh, and results in more offspring, then that genetic behavior will be bred into the population. But it's very difficult to say, and I know this because I've been reading about it quite extensively of late, it's very difficult to say any behavior is purely due to a genetic factor or a gene or even a suite of genes. It's almost impossible to look at genetics in the absence of environment, so nurture, and in case of humans specifically but in the case of many other animals in you know without the light of culture as well and so it's a combination of nature nurture and culture that make up the suite of a, an individual organism's behaviors and so you know while there's not a lot of culture in leopards i don't think in, you know the less the further away you get from primates, the less actual culture you'll find. Uh, uh, certainly the nature and the nurture and the complication, complicated interaction of those things and the environment, which includes the nurture, uh, will define how an animal behaves. They definitely have genetically different personalities, leopards. We know that. Yeah, when it's exactly, you're exactly correct. Instinct honed by experience. Instinct would be a genetic response to something. Uh, experience would be an environmental learning. And so you've just summarized it in a completely different way or with different words, but said exactly the same thing. That's absolutely right. It's instinct honed by experience. The classic example of that and one that you'd give to a sort of first year university student, I guess, or anybody who's just starting to learn about this stuff would be language in human beings. 
Human beings are genetically predisposed to language. They're not genetically predisposed to English, though, or to Zulu or to Spanish. And that has to be trained into the brain. But without the genetic predisposition to want to communication and to language, you couldn't teach an animal to speak Spanish. You couldn't teach the llama to speak Spanish uh, as hard as you tried. It would be impossible. Uh, but you can teach a human being to speak Spanish because we are wired for language. So does that make sense? Language is a classic example of nature and nurture working together. And at the same time, language is probably also a very good example of nature via nurture. So the better you become at speaking, the more effective it becomes um, or it became, you know, in our history, the more it was bred into the population. So those who were unable to speak as or communicate as well as others uh, weren't able to breed as much as those who could. And so the oafs who were unable to speak were eventually bred out. It's really fascinating stuff, and if you are truly interested in it, you should get along to Robert Sapolsky's book, Behave. It's f just m amazing. Well, that's a very good question, Miss LeBob. Is the culture of Juma leopards to be used to vehicles? Yeah, I, I suppose it is. Um, you know, again, if you drill down into it, you can find a thousand anthropologists who will give you a thousand different definitions of what culture actually is. Um, and I'm certainly no anthropologist. A better example of animal culture is something like a group of chimpanzees. Now, chimpanzees in different parts of the world have different behaviors. Uh, that are often molded by their environment, so the culture is often molded by the environment. But there's a very famous example of a chimpanzee whose name was Anna, I think, if I'm not mistaken, who one day started to wear a piece of grass in her ear. She just put a piece of grass in her ear, and every day after that she put a piece of grass in her ear. And her son, Having watched the mother, did exactly the same thing, also put a piece of grass in her ear. And eventually her whole group started wearing a piece of grass in the ear. So it's very similar as us wearing earrings or bangles or tattoos or anything like that. And eventually this whole troop of chimpanzees wore grass in the ear hole. For no reason, it didn't help them with anything other than fitting in with each other. So that was a kind of cultural trait of that group. No other chimpanzees wear grasses in their ears, so there's no uh, kind of um, survival help for it. It's just become part of that group's culture. So are these guys culturally uh, predisposed? They're not predisposed, but is their culture to be used to vehicles? Um, no, they aren't, you know, because it's not a norm. It's not a social norm that they've developed because they're not social animals. So. Every individual leopard here is, I suppose, used to vehicles because they have been individually habituated to vehicles. I suppose you might describe it as slightly cultural between, say, daughter and mother because she may well have learnt that we are not to be terrified of from her mother and from the way her mother reacts. Although, interestingly, I'm not sure that is the case because often you can have a terrified mother and you can have a completely relaxed cub and that's because the cub has learnt on its own independently that the vehicles are not a threat and yet the mother never gets over her fear because she had a bad experience perhaps when she was a youngster so I'll give you the name of that book again Robert Sapolsky Behave Sapolsky quite fascinating human being intimidatingly large brain book full of far too many facts to remember but very very interesting all right everybody let's go back to the oil bag who is sitting with the Ninka Puma pride and they are doing nothing Yes, the old bag. I'm still feeding this vehicle with some oil. 
What a nice nickname there. I like it. Thank you, James. And good luck. You are the best of, to find Tlalamba. So I'm still with the lions, and these lions are super predators and dominate the Bushveld predator hierarchy because they can take carcasses wherever they can from other predators. But their real competition is hyenas. Remember that if hyenas form this huge army, they can chase off lions. And here I can only see one, two, three, four, five, six lions. It means five are not here. They are somewhere maybe hunting, maybe sleeping, or maybe mating. You can see the black tip on the ear there. It's black because it has to help when hunting or, or moving. It tells the other members where to go. And I've read something uh, with the lions uh, some, some time ago about uh, their hunting strategy. They're like uh, rugby or basketball players, if you can name the few spots. They're, they know who, who has to go to the flank, who has to start the surprise attack, who has to do this, who has to do that. They have positions in the pride. And uh, I really need to know how do they communicate because we can find out maybe they are like up to 20 meters apart when hunting, but I'm telling you, they will be doing what they've planned to do when hunting, unless the hunt goes wrong. And that's the best strategy to to do because the leopards they only think for themselves when hunting. Jody wants to know are dominant males around. No, I haven't seen a big male here, but we had a big male yesterday morning. I think uh, he went to join the other two males because in this territory we have three males that is from coalition. And they are called Avoca. I don't know whether they are safe to, to have a territory in Juma because they can spend a lot of time without coming the site and, 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 and demarcate and reinforce their territory. I, 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 I sometimes think maybe the other males will come in and, and, and take over the side of Juma. But who knows? And those, those are focus are still young boys, still have power, and they are three. And remember, one lion can't stand them. If they, uh, they, have, they, they are chased out of their territory, it means those lions must be very strong, or they might, must be maybe three or four and well experienced. Because taking three lions down while you are a lone male lion, it will be not possible. And I'm sure this one is, is dreaming about meat. Can, you can tell they are not heavily panting, it means they have been ate a lot. Patsy is, is wondering where the rest of the pride is. Uh, these lions they have a huge territory, hey, and uh, the thing is, uh, their territory uh, is also on the other side of the reserve, our neighboring reserves, where we are not allowed to traverse. So they might be there. Sometimes we communicate with the other lodges about these lions or, 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 or big cats, like leopards. Mm. 
and I'm sure they will be joining the rest of the uh, pride later because there might be like six like this but tomorrow or before the end of today there will be 11 and the male will be joining and then they will be hunting they will be sleeping or mating you can see the the cuddling they and this is to reinforce the the bond because bonding in lion um, life it's 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 essential they have to know each other's smell and BK go to that tail they can can you see how how how, how thick is that tail that one yo look at that thing it's thick And it's nearly the size of my daughter's hand. That tail, oh, it's thick, hey? And slightly bigger. As I can see now. So I don't know whether where is, is Tingana. I would love to see Tingana this afternoon. But you know, lions or animals, they can give you these surprises all the time. I'll just hang around and relax, and maybe they will do something better than sleeping. But for now, let's go to Gigi in the Mara. Uh, only I owe you a glass of apple juice. You know, you have given me such a wonderful title, the president of the Associated Republic. Well, as the president, I have decided to show something different. I like what my friends have. They got cuts and I thought I'll do something different. I mean, let me see, we're gonna stop. Uh, they got leopard, they got lions, and I'm trying to look for something different. I truly like there, or you like the hippos there. So let's look at the hippos there. And uh, want to show you the Maro River. Uh, ha. Are you happy with this angle here for those guys? Keep going. All right. Excellent. Now we have arrived at the Maro River, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, actually, the cat just getting to its balance nicely. And the reason for me to come here is to show you that our river is back in business. The Mara River is flowing again. And of course, you cannot miss these amphibians here. You cannot miss these hippos. Huge, sometimes grumpy looking. And the hippos, if they would talk, they're like, well, thanks to the long rains in Kenya, because their home or their main habitat has enough water to keep them going. Can you hear that? Hey, Deborah, are you still there? That's another stock for you there. I won't give you the homework to tell me who that is, but that's the yellow billed stock. Yellow billed stock. Sometimes we call her the wood stock. Look at the color of her beak. Now we're here, the tea I've given, you know, gotten enough. And this is again the beauty of the Mara. Who else is there? Very good, we've got some Egyptian geese there. Excellent, lots of bird species today. And we're gonna be looking at this bus and see they're having a drink. All right, P. Hart, I'm sure you have a question there. I'm not sure you know you want to hear a bad call or something. I'm sure Faisal, let me know what P. Hart would like to know. Oh, got you. Well done, P. Hart. 
that is an interesting bar call. And I just wish you could hear the the Egyptian geese uh, making their call there. That's another lapwing there. So we've got three species there, a uh, pea hut of birds. We got a lapwing there in the middle. They used to call them plovers way back. And you got two Egyptian geese. And on the right was the woodstock or the yellow billed stock. You must be having a lot in commonality there. Now, the other week, all the rocks you see there were covered by water, or maybe 10 days ago. So, because the rain, the rains have subsided a little bit, so the levels have gone down. But if you compare to how it was a month ago, there was nothing trickling. The water had no current. It was zero movement. So this, to me, is still very good news. You hear that people there? And this reminds me of the Chitra Hall in Juma. Very loud. And in general, those will be the males, you know, when they want like, to dominate and make some calls and reminding any other male that would be, you know, I'm the main guy here and I am in charge. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Mara River, and the source of this river is some place on the highlands of Kenya. Nick, let's talk of migration, and you've got those words out of my mouth. Now, I was saying this river, Nick, the origin of this river is some part near the, you know, at the high, some highlands of Kenya, near my village. And the river is about 400 kilometers or 250 miles or so. This area where we are currently is one of the main crossing. When migration Nick comes, there's a lot of activity in this area. I'm looking at the end of June, early July for the migration to come. And when we talk of migration, we could be talking of almost a million and a half wildebeest and about 800,000 zebras. Of course, the equated number of elands too. Sometimes they say we've got about 200 to 300 elands. So those are the three main species of animals that are involved in the migration. Then the river swings by, of course, goes through Kenya, or the Mara Game Reserve, mm. and then it goes all the way to the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania, and then comes back to Kenya, and it drains in Lake Victoria. And we all know Lake Victoria is the source of the River Nile, one of the longest rivers we got in Africa. And what I'm trying to say, the water you see here, all those hippos are in that water. This water one day will make its way to Egypt. Will you believe that? Going all the way to the Mediterranean Sea. Hippos, both diurnal and nocturnal, and like now, they'll want to stay in the water, you know, in the whole day. And Faith is uh, amazed by that fact that where we are, we are connected to the Mediterranean Sea or to uh, the Egyptians because this water ends up in their country. And I want to believe this is the main water they use back there. It's dark there, and that looked like a white faced tree duck. This is very good. Lots of bad species today. White faced tree duck. I'm not sure she wants to have a drink, most likely. But as we wait to see whether she is going to have a drink, yes, she is having a drink. I think Talamba wants to eat all she is eating. Uh, Talamba is not sleeping anymore. Talamba is having herself a very fine meal of prime kudu liver. I think that's what she's on to at the moment. So she's managed to get up and she's having a wonderful time eating some kudu. Beautiful afternoon, just a little bit of wind rustling the leaves. You can probably hear her tongue going. Pretty gross, really. She's had this thing for at least two days, I think. She's 
he's finished a lot of it. And the shroud was a... We, as we drove in here, we saw a mother kudu. A mother kudu. We saw a female kudu. And why the car would have been hanging around here, I can't imagine, unless this was the youngster that she lost. I'm just going to press the clutch slightly, Jandre, and see if we can't roll forwards. How's that? A bit better? And I have no angle for illegal photographs. Pranav, I think you'll find that all cats are strategic with hunting. And I think that you'll find that you couldn't say that they are most or less strategic. They're all opportunistic, which means they'll take any opportunity they can. But if you consider our two big ones, the... Uh, leopards and the lions, you'll find that they are equally patient, although their strategies are different, uh, they are equally strategic. So you'll find that a leopard will use all sorts of cover, sound cover, possibly wind direction, in order to mask their approach to within a very small distance of their potential prey. And then with a lion, the strategy involves teamwork and operating as a team. So I'm not sure that you could say that either was more strategic than the other. Yeah, we've got lucky here, everybody. Everyone pulled out of the sighting and she got up and came to eat straight away, which is fantastic. She's been feeding on this for some time. Hmm. I find, uh, you know, the more I do this, the more I think about this stuff, the more I think about how, you know, we or always universally just about viewers and guides here, when we watch a death actually occurring, we find it very sad and that Buffalo's demise at the hands or claws of the Owinos the other day is a really good example of that. How we all felt dreadfully sorry for it, but once it's down and dead and eating, it's incredible how that impression changes. We stop really feeling sorry for the prey animal and we just marvel at the predator, which I suppose is how it should be. Um, one, a couple of you asking whether I think Tundi killed this. No, Tundi was miles away from here on another kill. Tundi is a long way from here yesterday on an Impala kill made somewhere around quarantine, which is just near our camp. As the crow flies, we're a good kilometre and a half, so about a mile away from there. And I'm pretty sure that she killed us on her own. I cannot see any other explanation for it because she's one of the smallest predators out here that could kill something that size. And, you know, if it was a bigger predator, like a hyena or tingana, she wouldn't be feeding quietly on this on her own. So, yeah, I think she killed it. Yeah, Lada, she does look like she's going to burst, and so she's had a wonderful feed here. And even if she loses the rest to hyenas or her father, uh, that'll be okay. She's had a really good feed. If she doesn't lose it, she'll be another two days, I think. Unfortunately, there aren't really any trees she can hoist it into. There's a nasty knob thorn, not too far. But to get it in there, she's going to have to put up with quite a lot of pain. I'm not sure what she'll think of the Coca-Cola can that's been nailed to its trunk in order to stop the elephants. And many of you now are saying how proud you are of little Talamba. 
Um, well, I suppose that's fair enough. I suppose we should be relatively proud of her efforts. I don't think the Kudu mother feels the same. I would have said yes, normally they eat the organs before the meat, but in fact, we think she's just eaten the liver, as you came across to us, and she's obviously eaten a lot more than just that. So, yeah, sometimes, I guess, most of the time, I think, it's easier to get at, and obviously it's fattier, the organs, the offal. Now she's into the difficult kind of intercostal rib muscles. using her carnassial teeth to slice bits of meat off much more effectively than I can carve a chicken. After I've carved a chicken, it looks like somebody has planted a small bomb in it. So full, so fat. All right, David, on his nostalgic trip of the Mara Triangle, seems to have made his way down to the water's edge. Yeah, true, and Jim stay right there with that girl, make sure she eats well and she has enough dinner before she uh, goes uh, to bed. We got a croc here, we saw the first reptile, been looking around for any sign of a reptile here. And I saw this youngster, uh, he's young, either male or female, very difficult to tell from that position. But you can see a reptile is being cold-blooded. What she's doing is just to warm herself up on top of that rock. Uh, that rock has been hit by the sun uh, the whole day, so it has a lot of heat that could be coming from it. And the belly is being softer. She is able to take a lot of uh, heat uh, from there. And uh, those are the white face whistling ducks landing. Yeah, we are having a party here. We in fact started with three, and now we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, almost ten of them. And again, as I said, these are white faced whistling ducks. Beautiful ducks. Long time ago, I used to call them Egyptian geese. Everything to me of that color, that size, that shape, I used to call it the Egyptian geese. And they're definitely having a little drink. Let's see, we can hear the river flowing and all the birds around here. How wonderful is that? This is something I would truly miss. To see all the beauty, to hear all the calls and all the sounds out here. The hippos in the background. They're just waiting for some time as it cools off and gets darker they'll definitely head out of the water to start a feeding. There has always been a debate, where is it safe, with a hippo in the water or out of the water? I've always thought you've got better chances with a hippo out of the water than in the water. I remember when young in my village, should you have bumped into a hippo, the hippos were doing anything possible and pushing you towards the water because they knew once the water, they would be kings, and they would deal with you accordingly. Let's have a look at another 
bat in QRG. And this is the spa winged lapwing. You remember we saw her before. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is truly priceless. Now, look at the reflection of that lapping in the water. Isn't that wonderful? Spa winged lapping is the name of that bar there and definitely feeding herself by any living organism she can catch all the invertebrates there be it worms or insects look at the speed she's moving in so she needs to move very fast and pick up whatever very quickly lovely calls from the egyptian geese I hope Deborah you're still watching with Eligal. I hope the crown crane was not enough. It's good to add a few bad species. Some of the most uh, beautiful. Ooh, are you having a drink there? Are you cleaning your beak? Or are you looking for food? <laughs> I'm rather confused what she's doing there, but I just guess she's cleaning her beak. Hey, Mrs. Lapwing, Jumbo Jumbo, hola, que tal, Mrs. Lapwing, and we're going to show it to you, and Lapwing, Mrs. Lapwing, I'm going to thank Archie for bringing uh, the Lapwing back to you, Spa Winged Lapwing, hopefully you are well, Mrs. Lapwing, and oh, very good, and no, thank you for your questions and barrings, hopefully be right back pretty soon to keep showing you more Lapwings. I'll try and see if I can get a water lapwing for you when I leave this particular spot I am in today or this time. And in general, you get the spa winged uh, lapwings being on their own. Uh, you don't see them like going in big groups. Now, are you cleaning uh, your beak again there? Or is it the, the other one? Or are you trying to disturb the water and anything that could come out? You've got to feed on it. That's more or less like it, like what you see the ducks doing. Very good. I'm sure, ladies and gentlemen, what will happen? Uh, the long rains still continue, and I do not think the levels will go anything lower than this. Uh, from a distance from where we are, we can hear lots of thunderstorms, and I can see lightning in the background, which would indicate more rains continuing. And as I was saying earlier, the source of the Mara, the highlands where this river starts pretty close to my village, and when I speak to my locals or to the people back home, and that's the direction Achi is showing you. That's towards an area that's called the Mau Escarpment. Uh, they're pretty high areas, and we've got streams and big forests there. And when I talk to my villager, my friends there in the village, they tell me we have a lot of rain going on, which is a very uh, good sign. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave these hippos here. Keep enjoying the water. I'm sure any time now you'll be coming out to go feeding, and I'll move on. And as you move on, I'll take you back to Juma with Koli with Nkuma lions. <laughs> you won't believe what happened here. <laughs> Something really happened here. These lions were, were up just now now. What happened, um, two impala rams were, were busy rutting and, and clashing horns on the other side here. And, and then this one uh, impala came running this side. Just straight at, uh, to these uh, lions here. And then one noticed that uh, impala running from that area to here. And then it, it started chasing it. So I haven't seen impala before jumping that high, hey? <laughs> I'm sure that impala, wherever it is, it's praying, it's praying, it's praying, and it's thanking its ancestors. It's kneeling down, it's sweating, and it's... Yo! <laughs> they didn't manage to catch that impala. It, it, it took off just maybe three meters away from them, and then they started chasing it, but uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't successful. And then they're back to what they do best, sleeping. And this shows that these lines, they can change the mood, like, just like that.
even if they're full, if the opportunity availed itself, they will hunt. And this is the reason why most male impalas are killed during this time of the year, because May is the um, mating season or rutting season. And then they'll be making noise and they'll be like concentrating on the other males and females than concentrating on the predators. I wish that was recorded. And it just happened so quick. And uh, BK, when we, we, we were just talking and talking here, and we, like we saw this impala running to this pride. And we got excited to that point that we forget what do we were supposed to do, like press record and stuff, because we were laughing after that. <laughs> yeah, she's saying this is very funny, eh? Kel6 wants to know, are the Birmingham boys, the B-boys, still around? Uh, I've heard that they are still around, but where? I don't know. They were... The B-Boys <clears throat> were once uh, around Juma. And then they left Juma for whatever reason. I don't know why they left Juma. It was part of their territory, but it's no longer their part of their territory. And then the Avokas were very lucky to find this place because they didn't even fight for territory. They found this place with females and no males. And then they, they took over until today. And so if they are, they are being lazy, they will be chased away by males who want to extend their territory or who are from the nomadic lifestyle looking for a territory. And what was very interesting is that the way they've changed the mood from sleeping mood to hunting mood, uh, it was so phenomenal. Those impalas, they must be careful. And I'm sure wherever he, he, he is, is busy telling other impalas, or maybe he's busy telling the story to the females there, that he, he nearly missed the rotting season because it just ran next to the lines. So since I've been here, there was no birds, nothing that uh, were shouting or making a nice call, trying to listen, only the sounds from the leaves clashing, touching each other while they are pushed by the wind. And I wish this thing can happen again. Really saying the Nkuhumas will always be favorite pride. Yes, I also like these lions. I, I, I'm not saying I don't like leopards, but I, I prefer to, to be on a sighting with the lions. I know they spend a lot of time not doing anything, but looking at these huge cats, it's so amazing. And I miss them sometimes because uh, we, we don't see them often like <coughs> a leopard, sorry. And they will give you this look. You know this uh, handy look when, when you are next to, to her. And she will give you this scary look. And lions, they will give you that look also. And they will, you will ask yourself, what are they thinking? so quiet out here. I wonder how how big is that uh, kill, Kalamba kill? How big is that Kudu FC? Is it a, a juvenile or? Oh, maybe we might see another Impala jumping on top of these uh, Nkuhumas. Okay, it seems like a juvenile 
Could do. Well done, Tlalamba. But for now, while we're watching, maybe there will be action again. Let's go to Tlalamba with James. Here is a leaf followed by rack focus and Tlalamba. There she is. He's been making fairly short work of her kudu. I've been trying to take some pictures. I haven't got any decent ones, I don't think. I always think I've got great pictures. Well, always, I think that. But then I get home and start editing them, especially if there's meat involved, and they always just look a little bit macabre to me. So you'll seldom find a picture of mine with an animal doing what this one's doing. got herself a properly good meal here. Hmm. This will stand her in good stead. It must be exhausting to eat like this. I also always think about the palate and their tongues with all those sharp bony fragments that they create. Surely that must hurt. I'll also tell you that some wild dogs and another male leopard have been found, not on Juma, uh, but Quarantine, who is, of course, Clalumba's uncle. Yes, uncle? Yes. Clalumba's uncle is on Buffelshook, which is not too far from here. Ike, I think that twitching is a function of them of itching and then wanting to get rid of flies and that sort of thing so they just f kind of flicker the skin dogs can do too and if you've got a dog at home you'll find that they do that if it's just a little itch they'll kind of twitch the skin a bit i can't do it i often wish i could She's just listening to another vehicle coming into the sighting. Wondering why on earth, what on earth she has to do to get some peace. Well, yes, our Laura Moore is eating a little bit like a teenager, I suppose. That's a good comment. I haven't seen many leopards not eat like teenagers, though. So she's hungrier than some of the adults. I couldn't figure out why I couldn't hear the vehicle coming in, cheetah planes, in their electric vehicles. And while the roof I think they have on the car is possibly unnecessary, I absolutely love the electric car. Oof. That's great. Guests look about as happy as one might just before being carted off to death row, but hopefully that will improve. There we go. I've seen it one or two smiles now, everybody. Ugh. Gloria, I don't know the answer to that. I'm going to say yes, but I'm guessing. Do animals have different blood types like humans? I mean, I think it probably depends on the animal. I'm not sure Drosophila, the fruit fly, has got uh, different blood types, but I imagine most mammals do. I don't know about uh, reptiles or feech or birds, but almost certainly the mammals, I would say, Just listening to the radio, there seems to be quite a lot going on with quarantine male leopard, who is his uncle, and looks like they might be coming south, which means we might get a view a little bit later. 
but I think they'll probably end up in Torchwood, unfortunately. We can go to Torchwood. We can go to Torchwood today. So if they end up on Torchwood, we can go there. Torchwood is the reserve to the east of us, if you're a new viewer. But right now, we have the best possible view of this gutted kudu. JK, yes, they can, in theory, digest any bone. The difficulty is not the digesting of bone. The difficulty is the crunching and eating of bone. So they do not have the jaw strength to break up the same size bones that hyenas can. They can digest the bone, though, yes. I imagine it's just a question of digesting the calcium. I don't think that they would derive nearly as much nutrient from the bones as something like a hyena can, because, of course, they are designed to eat that sort of thing to take advantage of the bones that many of the other animals can't eat but yes they could digest it poor old kudu that's a big piece of prey hey that's a big animal i think that's the size of a male impala at least possibly even bigger Do leopards ever get too big? Thank you, jean -Dray. I had put myself into a rather comfortable position over here, and <laughs> jean -Dray thinks that's very amusing. I may as well complete the effect. <laughs> um, oh, toothache. Uh, can leopards ever get toothache? Uh, yes, I don't see why not. Remember, this goes for a lot of the disease that animals get and a lot of the... Um, things like toothache they would get, or that we get, it's a function of the way we live. So our teeth ache and get sore because we eat rubbish. We eat things they're not designed to eat. We eat sugar, which eats away at our teeth. We drink Coca-Cola and that sort of thing. And we chew, perhaps, on things we shouldn't and drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes, and that all affects our teeth. And so while I'm no doubt that a leopard can get toothache, abscesses like we do in our teeth, I would imagine the incidence of toothache, abscess, that sort of thing is much reduced compared with what it would be for human beings. Elephants do. We know elephants get toothache. We know that they have terrible trouble with their tusks. Now, off to the left, you may have just heard some Franklin's alarm calling, and that's why she's up and she's looking. I would be surprised if she managed to get through this whole kill without another predator arriving, either a hyena or most likely a scavenging daddy. That's a big kudu. She's just dragging it further under the bush here, I think. I mean, you can see, I don't think that that's a calf. It looks like an almost adult cow, you know, sub-adult cow. She's got absolutely no chance of hoisting that. It's still hugely heavy. Now, which way the wind blowing from? The wind's blowing from the northwest. So if Tingana is anywhere near that area where those Franklins are coming from, he'll make a beeline for this area. You can smell a kill at 300 miles. Not quite. Yeah, she's looking over that way. This is going to be a good place to hang around. She's looking that way because it's not only the Franklin's alarming, there is also a little group of blue wax bulls alarm calling. So she's going to wolf down as much as she can. Oh dear, she's eaten off its face. That's very disgusting. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, many of you are saying you hope it's not a hyena that's coming. I think the hyena would be the least of her worries. She's perfectly capable of dealing with a the hyena these days. She's dealt with so many, she'll just go bounding up into a tree if a hyena comes around here. 
Her father, however, I don't think he'd be a big threat. All righty, I think that that's a good idea from Faith, who's directing. She said, let's go across to a more pleasant view of the Mara. That's right, James Henry, and I'm just wondering um, what time uh, or when will Talamba go separate ways uh, with her mother, the Queen of Juma Tandi? And of course, either a one has been going around that uh, Tandi got uh, a dance somewhere, and if she does, then to me that would mean she could be having a cab or two. And if that's the case, I'd say, I would say it's high time uh, Talamba leaves, you know, uh, her life and maybe tries and establish her self uh, territory. Well, the road I've taken is leading me to some very thick uh, clouds ahead of me. But what I would want to show you is the beautiful Olor Escarpment from where we are. This is one area I will not forget all my life. Uh, many times I'm sure you have heard me saying, and maybe Steve or Lauren or Patrick or other naturalists who have been here in the Mara, saying we are in the Mara Triangle. And I'm sure you have always understood. Once in a while, I've always tried to explain what do I mean by saying the Mara Triangle. Well, it takes the shape of a triangle, the game reserve we are in, and one arm or one boundary of that triangle is that escarpment you see there. And that is the Olololo escarpment. We just came from the Mara River, so the other boundary of the triangle is the Mara River. And then the other arm or side <laughs> Dana, very good. And I was just saying the other side uh, of the boundary is the Mara, is the, tr the boundary between Kenya and Tanzania or the Mara Triangle and Serengeti. Dana, very good question. You want to tell or you want me to tell your son, who apparently we share the same name and such a beautiful name, David, what is goodbye in so it is. And David, goodbye is very simple. We say Kwaheri. All right, David, did you hear that? Kwaheri. And at one point today, David, don't go away because as I promised, I'll be doing two songs and I'm going to use that word Kwaheri a few times. So for goodbye, adios. We normally say Kwaheri. Look at those clouds that are hanging down there. Isn't that beautiful? Looks like a painting, eh? Different colors of clouds. Rosaline, no! What part of the Mara will I miss most, Rosaline? I mean, it's only one area, I'm sure you know it. It is the Sausage Republic. There's no two ways about it, Rosaline. It's the Sausage State, as I'm calling it. And I'm still very proud that uh, Oli uh, has given me a new title as I'm leaving the Mara tomorrow, that I am the president of the Sausages. Oli, I owe you a glass of apple juice, as I said earlier. So, uh, Rosaline, let's be honest. Of course, the escarpment, because that's where we live on that top of that escarpment, or where we have been living for a long time. I'll always miss that part, because the views we get when we're not out on the drive are just breathtaking. Stunning views, as, you know, Faith in the Final Control would like to say. But uh, when I'm already down uh, from the escarpment and uh, on the floor here and doing the drives, the area around the sausages or the sausage pride, for those of you who could be wondering what I'm talking about, is one area that you will miss. There are not very many cars go to that particular area. And the days the sausages come out, they give you wonderful, epic sightings. You know, with the current 10 cubs, five mamas, and the two uh, coalition of the Oldonia pike males. I'm looking at that pride becoming a force to reckon with in the next few months. Especially the three old boys there who are going now to age and about nine months or so, they're coming up very well. I'm sure by the end of the year, they might, maybe the three of them, form their own coalition. 
and not sure what will happen to the old Dodge Pike, that's their fathers, and maybe a previous coalition that we used to call Kipuli. We'll see a lot of dynamics and a lot of uh, uh, ball games uh, changes going on there. Beautiful Archie. Let's just move on because after another few minutes, I'll be prepping myself for uh, a, bit, a, a bit of dance and, uh, you know, something like that, you know. So we just have to move on. Excellent. Yeah, I agree with you, Faith. It's beautiful. The good news are, well, we are, we don't think we'll get any rain until we finish the show. So that train is just on the other side of the Mara. I'm also to the uh, western horizon. So I'm still thinking about James Richard and hopefully I'll be able to get a cheetah for you. Uh, I haven't forgotten about you. Uh, Ellie Gar was able to catch for her what she requested, the great clown cranes. So James Richard, I'm now heading to the Bant area and hopefully I'll see a cat walking around. Or maybe catch the shepherd treemail, who knows? The temperatures have really gone down now, eh? I've put on my extra layer, and maybe in the next few minutes, I'll be putting uh, my other final layer as a prep myself for the dance. And when I do that, Let's go to Oli, I think, still with his lions. Yes, David Kitu, you really deserve the president crown. You are the president of the Sausage Tree Pride. Now you can see the, the food there, it's massive. And uh, they can be up to 13 centimeters long, massive, hey? And I was wondering how long will it take for six Lions to feed on impala, fully grown impala. And we nearly saw that. Nothing happened after we went off A. Eh? Only sleeping. And remember how how small or thin the the legs of a impala. And uh, looking at the the canines of 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 lions. They can be up to five centimeter long. And that simply means they can devour that impala in, I think in an hour time, because they can feed very quick. And if you can check how, how much impala weighs, especially a fully grown ram, and then uh, lions, like in lioness, they can weigh up to 130 kilograms. And sometimes the impala can weigh up to 70 kilograms. A fully grown one, a male one. And then if we can check again, a lion can eat up to 20% of its uh, body weight. So that simply means that impala would be gone in a few minutes. Interesting, hey? So we're still here waiting patiently for these lions to wake up because this is the time of the day where we, they will wake up. Uh, BK, let's check whether we can get uh, the sun on camera there on your, on your left hand side because I think uh, there's this good looking tree there. But I will try our level best to, to get that. Let's, let's try and see. Are we going to get that sun there? Uh, it's not good, eh? Just see a piece of it because of that uh, tree there. Beautiful. This is stunning indeed, FC. A person who's talking in my ear this afternoon is Faith in Johannesburg. Awesome. 
if it was a little bit up, then it would be just between that tree canopy and would get these phenomenal pictures. Sinek wants to know how strong is the land grip. Uh, let me compare that with my grip. I'm sure it's 10 times stronger than mine. Because last time I checked, if a lion can um, hit my neck full force, it can break it. Vote from Emma in FC, she's going with the lion. But mine, look. BK, you going with me or, or, or lion? Oh! Lions are big, I can't do that. Emma wants me to, to wrestle with the lion. I can't do that. If you want my granny to come here and, 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 and beat everyone here in, on Safari Live team, I must go there because my granny would be like, they've killed my son. They've killed my son. Yes, they've killed my son. Where else I, I, I was the one who, who went to those lines. But Emma says she, she believes in. <laughs> so I won't go there, so because I won't want my granny to come this side, you know. Because even if I went there on my own, she will she will think that they've sent me there, and then they will say she, he was with BK, he was with BK, and my granny will sort BK out. But no, no, it's a no. These things are not domesticated. Hey, they are they are wild. These are wild. Don't see them as these relaxed lions and think maybe you can walk past there. Trust me, you, you'll be killed. And just imagine, last time I checked, I, I, I was weighing 79 kilograms, and these can weigh up 230. So if you can check the size difference, it's something else. Susan is saying this line is making her feeling sleepy and lazy. Yes, indeed, but it's nice to, to look at these sleepy lines because if you can check the way they sleep, it's so interesting because they sleep close to one another and they, they put some, some legs on top of each other. And you remember if you have a kid or if you had a kid, if, if you have a kid that you still sleep with, I'm telling you, when you, you go to bed at 9 p.m., then by 2 a.m., your kid will be down there on top of your legs or your kid's hand will be on your face and fingers in your, in your nostrils. That's how they sleep, these ones. Awesome. Probably they be they'll be they'll be moving soon. Let, let them do that, and it'll be so amazing if to if we can follow them, trying to hunt. And we had a head of impalas not far from here. I think about 200 meters from from the spot we're at right now. There's a woodpecker that's pecking the tree there, but I can't see it. I can only hear the sound. Great birds. Uh, so for now, let's go to David, who's driving in the Mara. Not lucky with the cats. Well, thank you very much, Colin. Now, because I had promised something and we're just about to do the singing as I put on my right uh, dancing gear. What I want for us to do, because I want to give you an idea of what I'll be singing or the, the words in my song, we request Archie to zoom in on this particular song. Tell me, Archie, oops, a bit windy there. Is that good to move it up or down or is that okay? Now, I want you to take screenshots. 
sorry just to ambush you on the song there. So that's the song. And the one, the, the words in black are in my local language, the Scots Swahili. And I've tried the best I could to translate it in English. Fantastic, Archie. So that's the song we are going to sing in the next uh, two minutes. So just prep yourself, be ready. We're gonna sing that song. Thank you, Archie. And then I had shown you earlier, in my heart I told you I got some flowers. They're a bit squashed now, but not as bad because the light outside not be very good. I want to show you the flowers right here. Do you see that flower there? That's a red flower and that's called the flame lily. Okay, it's a flame lily. And then that goes back in my heart and I got another one there. That's a white one and it's different. And that's called the tissue flower. They only come during the rain, tissue flower. And then I got a third one, that one there. Also white in color, but different a type of flower. And that is called jasmine. That's called jasmine. So I'm just preparing myself. I'm sure Faith will give me two minutes and then I'll be able to do the singing because I want to be out of the road in a place that is safe and quiet. So I'm sure Arch will allow me to do, I mean, uh, Faith will allow me to do that. It will take me not more than a minute when I'm ready uh, to put on uh, my dancing shoes. Once we are out of the road, we shall be in a safe area where we shall not get any disturbances. And I'm just hoping all of you are going through the song now so that when we start singing, we are going to sing uh, together. Sounds good? All right. Let's see what view I should you like. As I put on my shoes, we want that view. Okay, I says that view there. So what I'm going to do is stop right here. That good there, Archie. Turn it a bit. Happy? Okay. I'm just going to show you the view outside there as you just jump out of the car and do what I need to do. As you watch that, you're going to just give me uh, just a couple of seconds for me to do this. Keep enjoying the view, ladies and gentlemen. I have not gone anywhere. I'm right here. I'm just putting on my dancing shoes and then you're going to sing uh, this song together. And then I'll tell you what I'm going to do with the flowers. The flowers are still there and they won't go anywhere. Yes. I have the right kind of shoe on. So one more. And I'll be all set, ready. Excellent. I now feel better. It's good now. And this is my song and my flowers. Now, I'm sure you're still enjoying that view there. I want to tell you something about the flowers that I got uh, to start with, because I already showed you the colors, because I knew once I'm out of here. Actually, you have you ever stand here? Good. I knew it could be a bit dark and you might not see the colors of the flowers very well. Now, I'm looking at the moment, this direction it generally is more less the northern hemisphere and i want to thank all viewers all fans from the northern hemisphere and i'm going to give you a present so i'm going to throw this to you and if you can i want you to catch it thanking all of you from the mara triangle david all right now every day in the morning when i'm out on a drive i've always enjoyed the eastern horizon where the sun shoots up and all of you viewers on the eastern horizon i'm gonna throw you this to thank you and the flame lady all right and of course we got other fans and viewers from the western horizon that's yours and not forgetting all the people from the southern parts of the world all our supporters thank you for everything that's another one for you all right, you all heard sometimes back there was a little fight between the Olorolo Pride 
and also the wells, uh, the, 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 the river pride. And because they were fighting, I would want them to have peace, nothing else but peace all their life. I'm going to throw them these white flowers to you all live in peace, all those are the white flowers. Now, the last flowers that I had, that I said, is a jasmine. These flowers are very special to me because they'll always remind me of the Mara. The first flowers I found when I came the first time in the Mara, jasmine, beautiful flowers. Now, let's sing the song. It's time to do the song and let's all sing together. Are we all ready? Jennifer, Fiona, are we all ready? Carol, are we all ready? Let's go. It's time to go with the song. All right. Jambo wapenzi wangu naomba kuwaga na wacha kwa muda tutaona na tena Jambo wapenzi wangu naomba kuwaga na wacha kwa muda tutaona na tena Olo lo 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 Oh lo 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 Oh lo 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 Oh lo 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 Oh lo 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 Moyo ni mwangu milele Nitawakumbuka Na watakia mema Siku zote zenu Moyo ni mwangu milele Nitawakumbuka Na watakia mema siku zote zenu lo 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 o lo 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 o lo 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 o lo 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 o lo 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 ma chozi ama pezi ni kisa ma kuheri Roho yangu ni nzito na wapenda sana macho ya mapenzi nikisema kwa heri roho yangu ni nzito na wapenda sana olo lo 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 olo lo 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 olo lo 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 olo lo 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 olo lo 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 olo lo 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 Oh lo 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 Oh lo 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 Oh lo 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 All right that was my little ceremony today and my one song for all the all the lolos that I love and thank you for your patience. Should anybody uh, think have really liked my singing with my very croaky voice as I wire myself, you can send uh, a video to us. I'm sure you know Hashtag Safari Live and we'll be able to watch and I'll also be happy to see what I did as uh, I did all the singing there. All right. But thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. And we need to move now. Excellent. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed all that. And now what you're going to do, do not go anywhere. We are still out here, both in the Mara Triangle and in Juma in Savisans, because we're going to change a little bit, go to the kids' show, and we shall still be with you. Don't go anywhere.